Hey YouTube friends, it's Wes. Hope you guys are doing great. In today's video, we are talking about the classic, the standard Bitcoin. We're talking about some brand new updates to the Bitcoin protocol, the likes of which we have not seen since 2017. However, this time around, a lot less drama, a whole lot more potential and some fun, exciting things. We're talking about Taproot. In this video, this is going to be the investor's guide, low tech, high knowledge, just for people like you and me that just want to know the basics and what it means as an investor. You want to know more? I'm covering all of this coming right up. All right, my friends, thank you guys so much for joining. I'm Wes Spencer. Welcome to my channel. We're going to be talking about Bitcoin Taproot today. If we are first meeting, I am a tech entrepreneur. I'm a cybersecurity guy and I love cryptocurrency. All of these things I cover right here in this channel. Speaking of which, while you're here, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Those things go a really, really long way for me. Everyone asks for it. So do I. But it really does mean a lot. All right, so let's talk about Taproot for a little bit. You may have seen this in the news cycles and you Googled like, what the heck is Taproot and why does that matter? Well, there's some interesting things in Taproot. I'm gonna show my screen in just a minute. I'm gonna talk about some things that have happened, but first let's start with this. The entire Bitcoin ecosystem has now signaled over 90% of the mining pools that have been operating and signing blocks have signaled support for Taproot. I think most of us, in the inside that had been watching this expected it to happen, the question was just going to be how long? Well, as of this week, we have signaled for it and Taproot is now in action and it is moving forward, which is really exciting. So the first thing you probably wanna know is what the heck is Taproot and why would I care about it at all? And how does it affect me as just a buyer and investor in cryptocurrency? Well, that's a good question. So let's start here. First of all, the way that Bitcoin has typically worked in the past is when you sign a block, and I'm trying not to get overly technical here, it's always used a cryptography term called elliptic curve. You just need to know that's a very industry standard, very secure way to sign a block. But elliptic curve has limitations in the block signing itself. And Taproot, think of it as an extension into Bitcoin itself that allows for us to do new things when we're signing a block signature into the blockchain that give us new capabilities. So maybe the, the most technical I'll get, and I'll put some links to this if you wanna read up more. It's based on the Schnorr protocol. <laughs> I love to say Schnorr. It's like this mix of like some German version of Snore. I don't know, but it's a fun word to say Schnorr protocol. Say it with me, Schnorr. Anyway, what's really good about this protocol is it gives us capabilities to do some things around multi-signatures. And it's going to extend the capability for us to have the, the opportunity to do more easily, more secure smart contracts. And that's a big deal. When you think about Bitcoin, you don't often think smart contracts, do you? Like I don't. When I think smart contracts, I think Ethereum is the gold standard. I think what Binance Smart Chain can do. I think with, you know, uh, Cardano is an example. These are all what I would call layer one, uh, so like cryptocurrency solutions that allow us to build on top based, based upon dApps. Well, Bitcoin can do the same thing, but it's been limited. The reason it's been limited is it doesn't allow multiple wallets to all work together and sign something uh, together to do something. If you think about most dApps, that's actually really important. You need to have multiple inputs, multiple wallets be able to sign something to hold something in force. Just to use a basic example, let's say you and I want to bet on the winner of the next Super Bowl, something like that. Well, Bitcoin doesn't really support that from a dApp perspective because it doesn't allow multiple wallets to all sign in and say, yep, we're going to do an API check at the end. We're going to see whoever wins and whoever made the right call is going to get, you know, the, the, the cryptocurrency that we both bet and wrote into the contract, just as an example. Well, Ethereum can do that. It's been doing that for a really long time, but Bitcoin can't until Taproot. So Taproot is through the Schnorr algorithm going to allow, I said it again, Schnorr, isn't it fun? It's going to allow multi-signatures to go into a smart contract it's going to increase security, it's going to increase privacy, all for use cases where there's multiple wallet inputs going into it. 
Now I will say for just single use, single signing, there's no changes to privacy, security, new innovations. This is purely to allow new capabilities for multi-signature wallet, which is great. Now, another question about Taproot is when does it go into effect? Well, it's probably gonna be about November when we think this goes into effect. Now that everyone has signaled for it and it's going into action, it's going into what's called a speedy trial. The speedy trial is going to be a set of things that have to happen first for us to test it, to make sure it works. And then once that happens, roughly in November, there's an upcoming block that will signify the beginning of Taproot being active and all nodes supporting it. And I'm gonna show this to you. I wanna give you some examples of some of this. I'm gonna share out my screen. I've been looking at this for a while. This is taproot.watch right here, and it's finally said locked in. Previous to this, it was showing you know a whole bunch of like greens and reds of who all has signaled support for it, who has not yet. And now that we're at 90%, it's we're locked in, but you can click on the about and you can see more about, you know, uh, how it works. If you want to go beyond this particular uh, video itself, but I'm going to skip by that. Now, one thing people ask a lot, though, is they're like, OK, so I get that we've signaled support for it. But like, how does that actually go into effect? Well, I'm going to show you. Right here is bitcoincore.org. This is the actual Bitcoin website. This is where you can download the node software. This is where this is where the community goes to drive all the code that undergirds the entire Bitcoin protocol. And so here it is. You can see this is Bitcoin Core uh, 0.21.1 released with Taproot. So this is the beginnings of it. And you can actually download this and run this if you want to you know, run your own node that supports it. So there it is. I just wanted to show that because I think it's pretty important. So you get an idea of like, this is real stuff. It's not just we said we're going to agree to it and we figured out later. The code has been written, still needs to be tested. New things may change, but here it actually is. You can see it right here. And this is uh, the code that drives all of that. So this is good stuff. Like it's really exciting because this is going to give Bitcoin new capabilities that bring it more into the ecosystem of what Ethereum can do. And a lot of people, this brings up some big questions that people have always had about Bitcoin. There seems to be a lot of camps of people that are like, you know, Bitcoin is going to go away eventually because it's not nearly as innovative as like Gen 2 solutions like, you know, Ethereum, Cardano and others that have so much more robust capabilities. And I, to a degree, I think those people are right. Clearly, Bitcoin is not as innovative as those solutions, but it's OK that they're not. If you think about Bitcoin the way I think about it, I look at it as a very innovative technology in and of itself for what it's kicked off. But I also look at it as it's continuing to evolve. It's continuing to build and grow and do some awesome things. They're just very slow and methodical about it. Why is that? Well, it's because they don't want to make mistakes. If there's one thing Bitcoin's known for, it's known for its stability. Now, it hasn't always been that way. And I want to take you down a little bit of a history lane of one time in 2017 and early into 2018 when Bitcoin had a big schism. There was a lot of drama around this. There was a lot of things that happened with it. And we learned a lot of lessons when the community can't agree. And I want to show you what that is. That is the days of Bitcoin Cash. And I'm going to share my screen out. And I'm going to show this to you for a minute. So this is Bitcoin right here at the current market. We know we saw these huge meteoric highs over time. We've come way back down and it's going up and down and up and down in that $30,000 price range. That's cool. That's good. But if we circle way back here, I'm not showing the entire history of Bitcoin. I'm, I'm intentionally showing the end of 2017 and the beginning of January 18. This is when Bitcoin went through some tumultuous affairs. And I want to talk about that. That was with Bitcoin Cash. So there was a time when the Bitcoin community couldn't agree with what's called SegWit or segregated witness. There was a lot of people in one camp that wanted one thing, a lot of people in the other camp that wanted the other thing, and no one could agree. And so what happens in situations like this, and, and people ask this, like what happens if you know Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies don't agree in the direction? Well, for open source ones, you can simply fork it. Like I today could take Bitcoin, I could fork it and call it Wes Bitcoin or something like that and create my own version. Now, I would need users behind it and economy behind it and a market behind it, all those kinds of things. But I could do that at any point in time. And that's exactly what happened with Bitcoin Cash. There was a group of people that didn't agree. Now, we're not going into the drama and the specific history of it, but I do want to show you what happened when they disagreed. So here is Bitcoin Cash. This is the actual hard fork. 
And for those that held Bitcoin before the fork, they were granted Bitcoin cash for whatever value they had at Bitcoin right before the fork. So like, for example, let's say you held one Bitcoin before this fork, you would have one Bitcoin traditional before the fork. And after the fork, you would also hold one Bitcoin cash, which seems cool. You're kind of like, hey, cool, cryptocurrency out of nowhere, right? And here it is. Well, what happened to it over time? Well, here it is. It's still alive today. It's still trading. You can see its value. It's currently at $622, which is not great. Um, you can see how it really, when it first released, it skyrocketed. It went way up to, look, I mean, as close as uh, two. Oh, yeah, there you go, $3,200. Now, keep in mind two things. This is this correlates as well when all cryptocurrencies really had that huge initial big bull run in 2018, right before that big meteoric crash that I've talked to on this channel. And so there's a little bit of that that trends with it. But also Bitcoin Cash was new and people were excited about it. And people were there were a lot of people that really had interest. But you can see what's happened over time. It's not done so well. It's not really had any growth. It did have some trending growth. Same as last time with the, the big bull run we had of late. But it actually hasn't really grown really significantly and has never sniffed its old high. So what does that tell you for Bitcoin itself? Well, it tells you when the community doesn't agree and a group of people get pulled away, it's not always a good thing for the protocol. It's not always a good thing for anything when you have a split in often case. And I want to even show this to you. This right here is a Bitcoin cash to Bitcoin uh, correlation, looking at the price comparison between both of them. And look at this here. Notice that the numbers over time have gone down. What this means is the value of Bitcoin cash to Bitcoin itself has gone down. The value of your Bitcoin cash is going down in correlation to the, the classic Bitcoin that's constantly gone up. So this correlation shows and proves to us that Bitcoin cash, in my opinion, never really grew and went the way that that schism of people wanted it. To go. So I say all of that to come back to this particular update has 90% plus approval in signaling, which means we're not going to see a big fork. We're not going to see what's called a hard fork, where a whole bunch of users say, no, we don't support this. We don't like the direction. We're doing our own thing. Bitcoin, very fortunately, is going to have a quiet, peaceful, widely adopted change to Taproot that should not, at least at the time of this video, cause any kind of major schisms. And that's a great thing for Bitcoin. It shows maturity and it shows the capability for the community to find a way to agree, which is awesome. Now, remember, Bitcoin is not owned by any one particular person. It takes a group of people through committee to produce the changes. And as you see here, it took a whole bunch of voting in order for this to enact. And this is a good thing. This is good governance, which shows good solid backing for the Bitcoin ecosystem, which is an investor should make you very happy because they're avoiding price volatility in every way they can. This brings up my last thought on Taproot. So while Taproot is super innovative, it's less about the innovation itself and more about proving some of the Bitcoin naysayers wrong. Many people sort of think of Bitcoin as just purely a store of value, like almost like it's not even technology anymore. For example, they'll call it the digital gold. And if you think about gold, when's the last time anyone held the precious metal of gold in their safe and expected new and updated innovations to come from gold? No, gold is literally gold. It's simply an element on the periodic table. And that's the end of the story. You'll never see new innovations out of gold as far as the element itself, right? Bitcoin's not that way. While it is a store of value and one of the best, if not the best store of value in terms of cryptocurrency, it is also a technology, and that is a big deal to cover to help all of us remember, while it doesn't innovate at the speed of Cardano or even Ethereum or all of the other myriads of crypto altcoins that are out there, it does innovate. It does have changes that come to it, which means that it's a technology first and a store of value second. And to me as an investor, that is worth twice as much because I get to know that Bitcoin is, has a growth trajectory that continues to grow as it is a technology, which is why I am still a huge believer in Bitcoin and its future. So there you have it, my friends. Taproot is on the way. I think eventually, and this is probably going to be next year when we see big updates that leverage Taproot, smart contracts and new companies instead of being built on Ethereum, or some other altcoin may start to be built on Bitcoin. That's a really big thing. 
I'm hoping to see new innovations come out of it, and I would love to know what you guys think. Do you think Taproot is a game changer? Do you think Taproot is small? It doesn't really make a big difference at all, and we'll see no real effect from it? Or do you have particular ideas where Taproot may become something very innovative, not because of Taproot, but because of what it's building and what it allows app developers to build on top for dApps? I'd love to know your thoughts about Taproot. I'd love to know if you're excited about it as well. Hopefully this video gave you a good overview of what Taproot is doing, allowing multiple signature wallets to be able to sign into the blockchain itself, allowing for new capabilities in privacy, in security, in innovation with new distributed apps, dApps on top, new smart contracts. So hopefully you have good understanding at a high level what Taproot does. And you understand as well that this is a great sign for Bitcoin to prove that they have been able to produce some new innovation and have the entire community in lockstep with them. All right, guys, I hope this video was helpful for you. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much.